Dude, what's up with the toilet? The plumbing's out again. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I've got a couple of new products that I want to showcase in the beginning and then we'll get into some questions. So the first thing I want to showcase is the long range shooting handbook I just got sent by Ryan Kleckner. Um, big fan of some stuff that he's done. If you've read some of our long distance or long range shooting articles on ITS, uh, Jason Chris wrote an article quite some time ago and referenced some of Ryan's videos. So um, He's a, he's a true resource in the precision rifle industry and I'm, I'm excited to, to get a copy of his book and read it. So um, what I like about it is that it's full of really good info that I had to kind of piece together myself in the beginning. Um, I think this book's been out a while. I'm actually going to check because I don't want to misquote this. So he, let's see, I was looking for a publication date but I don't see one. At any rate, yeah, sorry. Um, at any rate, I think it's full of useful information. So um, just looking, you know, kind of in the chapter list here, you've got ammunition, uh, accessories, mounting, your scope, uh, obviously a lot of stuff on fundamentals and ballistics. Um, I, really, I really just think that it's a, a great book. And it's what, from what I could see from actually reading through it, it's uh, there's a lot of the same content that you know I picked up from Jacob at Rifles Only when I went to that course that I've talked about on gear tasting before. But as you know, I've been kind of getting into precision rifle over the past year, finally. It's been one of my bucket list things that I've been wanting to do, so I'm uh, really looking forward to checking that out. So again, Long Range Shooting Handbook by Ryan Kleckner. You can pick it up on Amazon. We'll put the link uh, below. Uh, but what I like is he's donating 25% uh, of the proceeds to the Special Operations Warrior Foundation as well as the... Uh, Sua Sponte Foundation, so appreciate him doing that. So moving on, uh, the next thing I'm pretty stoked about is a new pair of Solomons I got. And if you've heard my gripe about Solomons kind of on and off um, through ITS articles as well as gear tasting, you know how stoked I was at SHOT Show to kind of find out about these. Um, hold on, I'm going to read it before I screw it up again. The uh, Speed Assault Shoes, yeah. So these just recently came out at SHOT Show in January of this year. I've been pretty stoked to, to take a look at them. And one of the biggest reasons that I'm looking forward to checking them out is because of the old, um, man, I can't get anything right today. Speed Cross 3s, sorry. Um, I have gone through multiple pairs of Speed Cross 3s over the last probably three or four years of wearing them. Um, you're looking at probably pair number six and seven probably sitting here. I, I keep these in my truck, you know, just as old shoes to toss on if I need to, but you can see the soles on these just get completely smoked um, after time. And, you know, honestly, it's, it only takes about six months to wear them down for me from, you know, just running and PT and other stuff. So um, one thing that I like is that they have a very similar shape uh, to the Speed Cross shoes and they're super lightweight too. Um, just like the Speed Cross, I can I can hardly feel that they even weigh much more at all than the Speed Cross, which I like. Um, and they're not Gore-Tex line. I really can't stand Gore-Tex shoes, so um, I like that as well. But they're a, they're a midsole, and this is very flexible back here. It's kind of a stretch, so I'm looking forward to that. But back to the root of this, the soles are completely different. Um, they're not these fat triangle lugs that the Speed Cross 3s have. Um, these are even sturdier than I think some of the uh, the Terex shoes that Solomon has too. So um, anyway, looking forward to getting some wear on those and kind of digging the, the burrow brown color too. So those are the Speed Assault shoes. And if you, I think I said it in another, not, or another gear tasting, but uh, the story behind how they came up with the Speed Assault shoe is kind of funny too. So try to link to that gear tasting as well. The next thing that I have to take a look at is a new bag from Nemo. This is their Salsa 15 degree bag. I have been using this Phantom 32 from uh, Mountain Hardware for a long time. So I just kind of wanted to show you the difference. Um, what I really like about this Mountain Hardware bag that I've been using for years now is that it gets down into a very small shape. I mean, I can 
squish this thing down into probably about like this when I have to. Um, it's a pretty lightweight bag. Um, just kind of folding this up just so you can see already. I mean, it's a really small bag. It's down, which I'm a big fan of down bags. It just kind of sucks if they get wet. So um, that's just a consideration if you're thinking about down sleeping bags. But so this new salsa from Nemo, let's take a look out here. I haven't even opened this yet. So they've got one of these storage sacks. Um, and I'll just go over this for those of you that aren't really familiar with sleeping bags. So the way to store a sleeping bag, as you saw when I pulled this out, was just loosely in this bigger bag. Um, that way it doesn't get compressed and stay compressed when you store it. You don't want to store it rolled up. You want to either hang them. Uh, if you've got the space to hang sleeping bags, that's a great way to do it too. But uh, if you can't hang them, um, suggest rolling them into the larger bags. And that's kind of what this bag is here too. So a lot of uh, sleeping bag manufacturers will label their bags. So you know when you have them sitting on a shelf, you'll be able to see what the bag is, just like I was able to clearly see on on this one, what I had when I pulled it off the shelf over there. So um, at any rate, I've been using that 32 degree bag from, um, man, I just said it, Mountain Hardware, right? Mountain, yes, Mountain Hardware. Uh, I've been using that for a while. I really like it, but it's lightweight. The only problem is I've frozen at night before in that, even in the 32 degree bag. Sleeping bag temperature ratings are really, really not an accurate science. So this 15 degree bag, I guarantee is going to keep me warmer than 32, not just because there's a difference in degrees. Uh, there's just, I can just tell right away there's more, uh, there's more down in this bag. So this is also a down bag and it might be a little hard for you to see exactly the shape, but what I like about Nemo bags is they have, I think they call it a spoon shape. Yeah, spoon shape backpacking bag. So it's got a, I like that it's got a little pocket in the front too. So this is actually, let me try to find it. I know there's a way in here somewhere. Well, at any rate. I know it said that. Blankenfold zipper, zipper watch pocket. Oh well, I will find it later. But at any rate, so it's spoon shaped. I don't know if you'll really be able to, to tell from me holding it up or not, but it does taper, which I like. And so it's got down text as their filler that's in here. It's obviously a down, I can, I can feel it. But uh, chunkier bag than my 32, but I kind of want that. I, I think it's a good balance between the 32 and you know, having a larger 15 degree bag too. Um, I also sometimes think even the 32 degree bag is a little warm uh, in the summer. So what I typically do is bring a sheet or another blanket and just lay on top of the bag too uh, if I'm backpacking or camping. So anyway, that's the Nemo Salsa 15 degree bag. And check that out. All right, guys, one last thing I wanted to talk about today is the Intel shirt I'm wearing. So a lot of you guys asked in the previous gear tasting episode what the shirt was I was wearing, and I'm proud to say we're actually launching these today for Life members and tomorrow, April 15th, it'll be tomorrow, uh, site-wide. So today's 14th. If you're a Life member, you get in on our early release benefit of being a Life member. And tomorrow, site-wide, the Intel shirt, along with the Xfil shirt and the Cypher shirt. And somewhere in here says... Thou shalt not get caught somewhere in the cipher. So those are a couple new shirts I'm launch we're launching and just wanted to kind of show that to you guys um, since you guys have been asking about this shirt and it's been a while. Um, also, for the promo, while we're selling these this weekend, you'll get one of our free Murdered Out Morale patches if you buy one of the shirts. So check that out. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Don't forget, we have these gear, nice gear tasting coffee mugs now. Official gear tasting coffee mug. I don't have to write in Sharpie anymore on my old mug. So anyway, the first question is, I love chainsaw, but I love, sorry. Uh, John Michael from Twitter, um, 
it really does say I love chainsaw, I guess chainsaws. I love chainsaws, but look for off the grid options with axes for home and backpacking. What do you suggest? So I brought together kind of a couple of things that I have for axes. Um, I started out, I guess in my axe usage with uh, kind of a axe at home to chop firewood with that I got from Lowe's that I quickly destroyed. Um, it's their Lowe's brand, whatever, I get cobalt or something like that. Um, but I, I destroyed that axe really quick. Um, so I was using that on top of my FJ for a while. You guys have asked about what I carry on a daily basis in my FJ too, and I decided to bring in a couple of those things. It's not everything, obviously, but um, I switched to one of these, I guess you'd say Fiskars, Fiskars, whatever, um, Fiskars axes, and this is what I keep up on the top. I like that it's got this protective cover on it. Um, it helps not have an axe blade, you know, pointing up in the air on top of my FJ. Um, so this little cover just comes off and obviously you can see it's got a little surface rust on it because I've used it. Um, but I like this axe a lot. It's got a good balance to it. Um, I think these are available on Amazon, honestly, along with the shovel that I carry, but also it's also the same brand of shovel. Um, it's, this has been a pretty sturdy shovel for me too. Um, I use these, you know, in off-road purposes. Um, axe, really, I use to chop wood. I don't really carry it for another reason. I guess if there was brush in the road, which I haven't typically encountered when I'm doing stuff, but if I had to clear brush, I would use this. But I've also got a folding saw in my truck for that too. So at any rate, this is, uh, I like the wedge shape of the head of this axe too. You know, in the back has this for, for pounding too. So. I, I typically uh, just pull this axe off my truck if I have to chop stuff at the house. So um, I just need to get a replacement at the house. And I've been looking at different axes for a while now and just haven't really found anything I want to pick up. But anyway, so for like camp size axes, uh, we used to carry these Mora axes in the store. I really still love these things. Um, this is their, their little outdoor camp axe, but super lightweight. I like the grip that's on here. Um, again, it's got, you know, this area for, for pounding in stakes and things like that, but it's got a nice beveled edge on it. I really like the, uh, it comes super sharp too. I'm a big fan of stuff that Mora does. These are made in Sweden. Uh, their, uh, their fire knife is one of the things I always take with me in the outdoors too. Um, they, I think they come in OD and, and blaze orange like that too. And then a while back, I picked up one of these Winkler uh, Hawks and I've, pretty well beat the crap out of this thing. You know, I used it to, you know, to uh, hit with, uh, I forget what I was using. I think I used a rock actually to, um, to uh, split some wood with. But, uh, you know, when I saw this online, I really thought this would be a bigger ax. And I was, I don't, I'm not really adverse to the size of it. I just had hoped for a bigger blade and I really haven't found that uh, it's really that big of a deal, you know, for, you know, basic camp chores such as breaking down firewood into kindling and things like that. So that's mainly what I use axes for, but hopefully that answers your question, John Michael. Um, and I will also say we got a new blue bottle coffee in, and this is three Africans that I'm drinking today. So this is, uh, I always love their explanations. Uh, so three Africans is generally a blend of you, Ugandan and two different Ethiopian coffees which rotate seasonally. It yields a fruity yet accessible drip coffee with plenty of body and a clean aftertaste. So it is pretty good coffee. All right guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember to access your questions on any of the social media networks using the pound tag Gear Tasting. Uh, if you've been enjoying what we're doing here at Gear Tasting, consider checking out our crew leader membership, which we've linked to below. Allow us to give you back something in return for your membership dollars. And then also, don't forget that we've got the t-shirts coming out today, and thanks for watching.